what led to the extinction of the last mammoth population. New Findings by Researchers The last woolly mammoths lived on Wrangell Island off the coast of Siberia. About 10,000 years ago, when the sea level rose, the island was cut off from the mainland. New research shows that this population of mammoths began with at most eight individuals, but has grown over time to approximately 200 to 300 individuals. The genomes of the Wrangell Island mammoths showed signs of inbreeding and low genetic diversity in analyses, but not enough to explain their eventual extinction. Woolly mammoths, Mammuthus primigenius, roamed the earth freely during the last ice age. They are thought to have become extinct about 10,000 years ago, although some isolated populations, such as on Wrangell Island, have survived longer. It is estimated that the Wrangell Island population existed until approximately 2000 BC. The cause of their eventual extinction remains a matter of debate, but new evidence suggests that at least one popular explanation, inbreeding, can be ruled out. In recent analyses, scientists determined that the Wrangell Island mammoths were descended from no more than eight individuals but had enough genetic diversity to survive. In addition to shedding light on woolly mammoth population dynamics, Analyzing the Wrangell Island animals could help develop conservation strategies for today's endangered animals. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Cell. Wrangell Island became the last home of the woolly mammoth. Rising global temperatures after the end of the last ice age caused sea and ocean levels to rise, which cut off the mammoths living on the island from the land. As the availability of habitats for mammoths decreased, their numbers also decreased. For some time, the two populations lived separately. The land population is believed to have died out first, but the species survived on Wrangell Island, where conditions remained suitable for the creatures. The Wrangell Island population was very small numbering a maximum of 200-300 individuals. Genetic analysis showed that these mammoths had low genetic diversity due to inbreeding and probably suffered from many health problems because of this, but that wasn't what killed them. We can now confidently reject the idea that the population was simply too small and that it was doomed to extinction for genetic reasons, says Love Dallin of Stockholm University. This means that some random event probably killed them. If it weren't for this, we would still have mammoths, he adds. Mammoths are an excellent system for understanding the ongoing biodiversity crisis and what happens from a genetic perspective when a species experiences a bottleneck, says Marianne Dehask from Stockholm University. In their study, Scientists analyzed the genomes of 21 woolly mammoths, 14 from Wrangell Island and 7 from the land population. In total, the samples covered the last 50,000 years of the woolly mammoth's existence, providing insight into how the genetic diversity of mammoths has changed over time. Compared to their land-based ancestors, the Wrangell Island mammoth genomes showed signs of inbreeding and low genetic diversity. In addition, they also showed reduced diversity in the major histocompatibility complex, a group of genes known to play a key role in the immune response of vertebrates. Research has shown that since the island was cut off from the rest of the world, the population's genetic diversity has declined, albeit slowly suggesting that population numbers were stable until the very end. And although this population of mammoths gradually accumulated harmful mutations over the 6,000 years they lived on Wrangell Island, researchers showed that the population slowly shed the most harmful ones. If an individual has an extremely harmful mutation, it is essentially not viable so those mutations gradually disappeared from the population over time, 
but on the other hand we see that mammoths accumulated moderately harmful mutations almost to the point of extinction, Dehask says. It is important for modern conservation programs to remember that it is not enough to achieve a decent population size again. It also needs to be actively and genetically monitored, because the genomic effects can last a very long time, he adds. Although the mammoth genomes analyzed in this study cover a large time span, they do not cover the last 300 years of the species' existence, and this could be crucial in answering the question of what caused the extinction of mammoths. The authors of the study plan to sequence fossils from this period and include them in the analyses. What happened at the end is still a mystery. We don't know why they went extinct after 6,000 years, when they were quite okay, but we think it was something sudden, says Dallin. The negative effects of sedentary work were already felt in ancient Egypt. Sitting most of the day, e.g. at work in front of a computer, has a negative impact on our health. But as it turns out, this is not just a modern problem. Scientists examining the remains of Egyptian scribes from over 4,000 years ago years found that they also suffered from ailments related to a sedentary lifestyle. Skeletons of ancient Egyptian scribes reveal how much sitting on the floor while performing administrative tasks such as writing and arithmetic affected their health. Numerous statues and wall paintings depicting scribes at work in a kneeling position or sitting cross-legged were found in various tombs. Analysis of their bones revealed that this position led to degenerative changes in the joints. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Scientific Reports. In their work, Scientists analyzed the remains of scribes buried in the necropolis of Abuser in Egypt in the years 2721-80 BC. In total, they examined the skeletons of 69 adult men, 30 of whom worked in this profession. Compared with men in other jobs, scribes showed signs of degenerative joint changes. Scribe in ancient Egypt was considered a high-status profession. They were employed primarily in the state administration, but also in temples and the army. In ancient Egypt, this profession was mostly performed by men and was passed down from father to son. These people were among the small percentage of people who could write and read. The profession has existed in various forms in all writing cultures. Officials with scribal skills belonged to the elite of those times and constituted the backbone of the state administration, said Veronica Dolakova from Charles University in Prague, CEO author of the publication. They were important for the functioning and management of the entire country, she added. But there were also problems with prestige. The work of a scribe was often performed in uncomfortable positions for long periods of time. The researchers noticed that the scribe's skeletons showed more visible degenerative joint changes compared to adult men in other professions. These changes most often occurred in the joints connecting the jaw to the skull, in the right collarbone, the upper part of the right humerus, where it connects to the shoulder the first metacarpal bone of the right thumb, and in the lower part of the thigh, where it connects to the knee. Problems also concern the spine, especially its upper part. The researchers also noted unique indentations in each scribe's kneecaps and a flattened bone surface at the bottom of the right ankle. The reason for these changes was most likely the uncomfortable forced sitting position in which scribes spent many hours every day. They sat cross-legged or kneeling, or rather sitting on their left leg with their right knee bent and pointing upwards. And like today's office workers, scribes leaned over as they wrote. In a typical working position, the scribe's head had to be tilted forward and the spine bent, which changed the center of gravity of the head and caused load on the spine said Petra Bruckner-Havelkova from the National Museum in Prague, 
the main author of the publication. The correlation between jaw disorders and cervical spine dysfunction or symptoms of neck or shoulder pain is well documented and confirmed by clinical studies, she added. Although scribes were among the state's elite and high-ranking dignitaries, they were exposed to similar risk factors in their profession as most office workers today. But why the changes in the joints of the jaw and thumbs? This was probably the result of scribes biting the ends of rush stocks to create writing implements, which they then pinched with their thumbs as they worked. Scribes began their careers as teenagers and this could last for decades. So they had a lot of time to spoil their health. Our research reveals that remaining in a cross-legged or kneeling position for prolonged periods of time and the repetitive activities of writing and adjusting rush feathers during scribal activities resulted in extreme strain on the jaw, neck, and shoulder areas, the authors wrote in the study. Bruckner Havelkova also admitted that the scribes probably suffered from headaches at least from time to time. They may have also experienced carpal tunnel syndrome in their hand, but this cannot be determined from the bones.